Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, yes, I am bitter. <laughs> As you can imagine, if you watch my Gambles Alert video that I made Saturday before the fights, I gave you guys the winning formula <laughs> for last weekend. Unfortunately, I did not follow my own advice. I did not follow my first instinct. I started looking at better than even money odds and got excited and saw opportunity and went that way instead. You know, if I would have parlayed the over in both the Taylor Lopez and Munguia Derchenko fights, I could have got like a plus 171, I believe was the number. All right. Um... If I would have parlayed the over with um, the other fight going the distance, because I think FanDuel didn't have the, uh, the over for the Munguia fight, I believe I would have gotten close to even money, not, you know, a little bit less, all right? I would have been in the winner's circle, but no, I played knockdown props, and, um, Hell, nobody got knocked out in the Taylor Lopez fight, all right? Now, I cannot comment on the Munguia Derevchenko fight, whether that was a robbery or not, because I did not see the fight in full. Um, I was kind of going back and forth, all right? I was out eating as that fight was going on. And when I got in, uh, the Taylor Lopez fight was starting, all right? So, um, you know, I kind of just saw like the end of the fight when uh it was drama there chico was backing away trying to avoid getting stopped all right which I also you know I, i'll give myself a little pat on the back i kind of said that if he was getting that box maybe his power would save the day all right and it kind of was that kind of is what was playing out near the end of that fight apparently all right now i was not watching that fight can i give a detailed breakdown of that fight but i was in the tbv uh gambling chat uh, as that fight was going on one of the guys said that Derevchenko was winning that fight five rounds to one as that fight was going on the first you know six rounds and then it was said that uh, that the live odds had Munguia as the underdog alright you got better than plus money on him better than even money all right and uh <clears throat> i was saying <clears throat> that that might be <clears throat> a good move all right <laughs> because i felt that you know Munguia was not gonna lose by decision on a golden boy show in california home of golden boy you know this fight was made set up for him to win all right let's just call it what it was you know, his promoter handpicked Derek Chico, an older guy who's had a you know, rough look, smaller guy, all this and that. <clears throat> if this fight went to the cards, I felt I, I didn't feel that Derek Chico would get a decision. I just didn't, all right? And uh, I, I hung around till these scorecards were read. And the first, the first card they read, and they didn't say that it was a split decision or anything like that, a majority decision. The first card they read was Lou Merritt, all right, who we know is one of the worst judges in boxing, all right. I forget what fight that was recently where it was kind of an outrage over his scorecard. Maybe it was the, the Ugas fight with, um, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Abel, whatever. It was the guy that he fought for the, the WBA world belt, all right, or the... the uh, not not the major one, but the 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 secondary belt. All right, on oh, Fox, I think he was the judge in that fight. They had a terrible scorecard, but uh, he has had some bad scorecards. Dumrez, an older gentleman, uh, probably in his somewhere in his seventies, might even be in his eighties at this point. All right, and uh, you know, he just. Uh, He's a terrible judge. He needs to retire. He needs to be kicked out of the sport, all right? But as soon as they said, what, 115, 112, 
I knew that Derrick King would not win that fight. You know, and then they said the other two, 114, 113. I already knew who won the fight, man. Chris Maddox flat out said that Magia or Derrick Chingo got robbed. So, you know, I'm not surprised, man. Um, you know, I feel bad for Derrick Chingo, man. If he did indeed get robbed, uh, I heard that I think Magia got knocked down in the, in the last round. But, you know, man, I feel bad for Derrick Chingo, man, if he got robbed, in my opinion, for a third time. All right. Um, you know, <laughs> And this is enough to make the guy want to quit the sport, in my opinion. You know, and I'd understand if he wanted to. All right. Now, quickly on to the fight that I did see. Now, I don't have a, a scorecard because I was flipping back and forth, and I kind of missed some of the, you know, some of the rounds. But uh, congrats to T.O. Uh, he proved me wrong. Uh, he he won that fight clearly. You know, uh, it was not close. You know, Josh Taylor, man. This guy became undisputed. It's like he forgot how to fight. Did he lose his drive to fight? Uh, his hunger, you know, or is it the weight cut? Is it you know tr uh, changing trainers? You know, I don't know what it is, man. But you know, this guy has fallen big time, man, big time, and not even close to what he once was. Super inaccurate. Couldn't even really land on To man. You know, uh, it's sad what's happened to this guy, man. I had this guy in my top three pound for pound. And uh, now he's on a two-fight losing streak. And, you know, in reality, you know, he, he got a gift against uh, Catterall, all right? And now he's like a former undisputed champ with no belt. He had the golden ticket to fighting Terrence Crawford, uh, you know, moving up. And uh, he didn't cash it in. Now he has no belt. Now, in my opinion, what he needs to do, he needs to go up to 47 and he needs to get another trainer, man. And he needs to uh, work his way back up. Don't even fight somebody that we know. He needs a, a confidence builder or two at 147. All right. Um, and then uh, maybe fight, you know, a, a contender. You know, somebody in the top 15. But, you know, he has fallen from grace big time, man. And, uh, you know, he clearly lost that fight, you know. Uh, so, I think I saw a video of something saying that T.O. might retire or something, which is kind of laughable. But, um Hell, truth be told, you know, with the belts being scattered the way they are at 140, uh, he might should consider going up to 47, man, and maybe he should cash in and try to fight the winner of uh, Crawford Spence. But they probably gonna have two fights, and then uh, both guys probably gonna move up after, you know. So maybe he could angle himself for a vacant WBO 147 title fight, you know. Um, you know, I I think that should be considered, man. Uh, you know, maybe take take a fight or two at, at 147, you know, in, in winnable fights, and uh, angle angle for that vacant WBO uh, belt if it becomes vacant. All right, uh, and that that may take a while, but um, that might be the move to make instead of sticking around at 140 for what? You know, I become a, a three division champion, then really maybe he could call it a day. You know, after those accomplishments, you know, so. Really, that's it, guys. Uh, yes, bitter. I'm, I'm not in the money, even though I, you know, <laughs> had some good picks. Uh, but you know, if you place wages, I hope you won. Congrats to you if you won. Hope you enjoyed the fights, and uh, I will check in when I see what's coming up this weekend. I look at the odds and let you let you guys know what I think about them. Thanks for watching.